so we have protein database let me write protein database so among protein database it can be the you know primary structure or primary sequence database and there are secondary sequence databases okay in a primary sequence database let me write it as a like primary here we are talking about primary sequence database among the primary sequence database there are protein information resources pir protein information resources the database which is also developed by national biomedical research foundation nbrf okay and this pir has four different categories pir1 pir2 pir3 and pir4 okay so what this four different categories have pir1 it has fully classified fully classified and annotated entry okay pir2 it includes only preliminary entries it has some redundancy okay pir3 pir3 type entries are unverified unverified entries and the four pir4 what it has artificial sequences genetically modified genetically engineered sequences okay these sequences are not transcribed these sequences are not translated no transcription no translation of the sequence those are placed under pir4 type so pir1 is the pure form information available in the purest form is this pir1 okay but this is example of this similar first pir database second type of database we have swiss prot prot means protein short form of protein developed by medical you know department of medical biochemistry at university of geneva so under embl european country here again now maintained by swiss institute of bioinformatics so earlier developed by department of medical biochemistry at the university of geneva embl but now it is under maintenance of swiss institute of bioinformatics or sib that's why we call it swiss because swiss institute of bioinformatics maintain it and then prot okay swiss prot because it has it's not sbi sib so swiss institute of bioinformatics prot means short form of proteins now the swiss prot carries every little information that we need that is very highly annotated entries annotated entries means a sequence if it's a sequence then every single area of the sequence is annotated marked with its function with its you know what kind of structure is going to form and any other information that are available so it so the more the annotation the better it is for a researcher to work with that sequence from that database so swiss prot carry highly annotated uh, uh, information and very low redundancy so it satisfies both important parameters of being a database swiss prot is a very important database okay and the third type here is embl translated embl or t r e m b l translated embl okay tremble so it has the data of coding sequences all coding sequences so whatever information available in embm embl from them among them whatever coding sequences that that information is available in tremble database okay and this tremble database can be divided into two different sections one is swiss prot tremble 
and another one is remaining tremble or rem all caps tremble okay swiss pro tremble where we have entries into the swiss pro directly and remaining tremble where we have entries not incorporated to swiss pro that's why it remaining because information is not incorporated to swiss pro okay and swiss pro tremble is where the information is incorporated to swiss pro okay so these are these three are very common examples of primary sequence database now apart from that there are some other databases okay for example owl owl you know question have asked is from this term owl what kind of database it is is a composite of four primary database primary source that is swiss prot so we have swiss prot in it we have pir protein information resource type 4 we have gen bank and we have nrl 3d and what is nrl 3d nrl 3d <coughs> is produced by this pir protein information resource this is nothing but a retrieval system it it, it is a database of pir type and it has a specific retrieval system known as atlas a t l a s all capital atlas retrieval system so nrl 3d swiss pro pir4 and gen bank all four together combiningly known as owl owl and there is one more type like swiss pro and tremble swiss pro and tremble together can be maintained so let me take another color to tell you that these two are combined together that is maintained by e b i this is the composite of swiss pro and tremble together and it has very low redundancy and of much highly annotated data Hmm? So this is all about the primary sequence database. Remember now, what about the secondary sequence database? So under protein database, we have secondary sequence database. In secondary sequence database, what we are dealing with? Data set of secondary structure. and we also have information about conserved regions conserved regions very important so not only like you know many people may think like here the secondary sequence database means uh, the database of protein secondary sequence no because there are 3d structured database where we have secondary sequence we have 3d structured database where we have uh, tertiary structure of the protein but secondary sequence database means this database is of secondary type there are primary type databases secondary type database this is secondary type database and then secondary type database what we have information about conserved region so let me write it down we have info about conserved region very important to have information regarding conserved region to understand the evolutionary relationship right and this conserved information about the conserved region can be obtained via multiple sequence alignment via msa multiple sequence alignment okay 
Now there are different secondary sequence database and they have different formats, different file formats of information. For example, let me give you some some example of this pro site. All capital pro site is an example of secondary sequence database again maintained by Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. Why this uh, site is created again for a specific purpose, not about any primary sequence of the protein, but here is about protein family categorization, characterization. So this is carrying information regarding protein family information regarding protein family, protein domain, motif, okay, conserved motif sequences, okay, which are conserved. This information is available in ProSite. Second is prints all caps prints what is a print database when as that name suggests represents fingerprint region it represents fingerprint region fingerprint which is known as consensus sequence also is an example of conserved sequence in protein. So basically if we talk about let me tell you the hierarchy so we are talking about this motif in this particular motif even in this motif inside of this motif there will be some portion sequence of which is highly conserved and that is known as the fingerprint region. So we can say that let's say there are 30 different motifs and this particular sequence is available in all the 30 different motifs. So we can call it as a fingerprint for that motif. Got it? So any so if you're if you're checking any particular protein family throughout that protein family if we whenever we find that motif we have a specific sequence in it we can tag it we can find it. That sequence is known as the fingerprint for that motif. That information is available in print database. Okay. What else we have? We have PFAM. PFAM database. That is maintained by Sanger Center. PFAM database is a collection of protein domains. Of protein domains. Now what is a domain, protein domain? A functional unit of a protein. Whenever the protein, it has secondary structures, super secondary structures, beta uh, sheet, uh, alpha helix, alpha beta alpha, then beta beta, beta loop beta like that. So all these structures when they are in like folded in a 3D shape, which has a meaningful function to play, then we call it as a domain. So a PFAM is a database with protein domain information in a specific model known as hidden Markov model. Hidden Markov model known as HMM, hidden Markov model. What is hidden Markov model? We will discuss that later on. Basically, this hidden Markov model is designed based on a mathematical formula and statistical analysis and uh, we will see how exactly hidden Markov model works, how it is formed but with the help of the hidden Markov model we get to know about the protein domain and that information is available in PFAM database. Then there are database known as profiles. What is profiles? Protein family characterization. So basically profile carries information regarding mutations in protein. Mutations. Mutations in protein. 
particularly insertion and deletion mutation particularly insertion and deletion mutation can be identified extracted and the information can be understood from profile database okay so basically the profile indicates the position where the insertion and deletion mutation take place in a conserved region okay that is under the profile database then there are some more databases there are blocks what is a block motif database so basically block is a database of information regarding proteins whenever there is a very highly conserved region in a protein family in a particular for example immunoglobulin is a family immunoglobulin family proteins and among the immunoglobulin family of proteins the very highly conserved sequence conserved region is found that information is shared with the block database and finally from the block database and prints database from both print and block from this two database we can derive another database known as identify identify okay so basically identify what e motif okay so basically with identify database basically it's a software to search any protein any protein that you are working with known unknown doesn't matter you just put in the information and you run a search with identify because the identify will search for fingerprint region because prints database have fingerprint region information regarding different family of proteins and it also have information from blocks where very highly closely conserved sequences are also feeded so when you run identify which can look into the parameters that you put in in both print database as well as blocks database and it can show you information whether your query sequence is similar to any protein sequence existing protein sequence in the database or not and that is very very important so identify is a combination of prints and blocks so we have seen these examples you know owl owl was an example where we have swiss prot pri4 and gen bank and iran nrl 3d as a combination so composite databases are also there in primary sequence database we have composite database which was this owl it was composite database okay composite type and here also identify is an example of composite database so these are all sequence databases where we have information regarding sequences dna sequences and we have uh, rna sequences basically we don't say dna rna we say nucleotide nucleotide sequences and here we also have protein uh, sequences amino acid sequences but apart from that we also have structure particularly proteins and also in case of nucleotide also secondary structures are possible we have rna secondary structures dna so